Good morning. We're going to be uh, learning today about one last way that plants are categorized. Uh, and then we're gonna go over some very basic um, structures of plants, the tissues that are found in plants and the cells that are found in plants. So this is found in chapter 20, section three. Uh, this is gonna be pretty fast. Uh, you know, just by looking at plants, uh, that some are uh, more uh, wood-based versus more green stems. So we call this woody, or herbaceous. So if a plant or a tree has more woody parts, you're gonna see more dead cells uh, and then the uh, cell wall containing lignin and cellulose, which makes the those parts very, very rigid. Whereas if you just have an herbaceous part of a plant, that would be the softer, it still has cellulose, but they're easy to cut. Uh, think about when your uh, uh, mom or dad or grandma, grandpa, when they um, prune a plant, if they can just use scissors or a knife or pruning shears, those are herbaceous plants. If you start having to get the, the loppers and saws out, that would certainly be woody. And then the last thing for the types of plants would be their lifespans. Uh, we have annuals, biennials, and perennials. And you might have heard about annuals versus perennials, simply because a lot of folks, when they plant and landscape, those are what they think about. Annuals are plants that really uh, just grow in one yearly cycle. And so you must plant them every year. So think about when you were um, in the spring, when you are uh, having to help your family plant and you get uh, vegetables or pansies or petunias and they will die and you have to plant them again and get them next year, those are annuals. Biennials, not so much um, in landscaping. There are a few, uh, just not as many familiar ones where they take two life cycle, two years for the life cycle. The first year they're gathering up all of the resources. The second year is focused on uh, producing the seeds and releasing. And then the perennials are gonna be the ones that you just, every year you see them come back. A lot of flowers are perennials, bushes, shrubs, trees, they just live past two years. And a lot of people like them because um, they continue to live, you don't have to replace them, and then they just get beautiful and bigger and showier and they're pretty nice. Uh, so plants themselves are a little, uh, alien to us in terms of how they're made up. If I were to ask you about the body plan of animals or the tissues in animals, you would probably be able to come up with skin, uh, bone, muscle, hair or fur, scales. You would have that familiarity. But if I were to ask you, like, what are plants uh, tissues, you draw a blank. And so understandably so, right? It's not something that you spend a lot of time studying, whereas you look at your skin every day. Um, but plants are made of three basic cell types and then three tissues. So plant um, cells, we've got parenchyma, colenchyma, and sclerenchyma. Now I've also heard them pronounced I've heard parenchyma, I've heard parenchyma, eh, take your pick. Uh, so parenchyma or parenchyma cells are gonna be ones that are involved in photosynthesis, metabolic processes. They store, they fix wounds of the plant and they are gonna be, more, they are gonna be structural, they're gonna be more about the business of the plant. Uh, so think the P in parenchyma would be the P in photosynthesis. That's a good way for you to remember. Colenchyma is going to be a little bit more rigid and stronger, uh, but it's not quite as strong as sclerenchyma. What I like to think about is um, they make columns um, for strength. 
Uh, that's the way I remember it. Uh, I think the celery strings um, are kalanchyma, but you can still kind of bend celery. So it's not like a, um, a hard, rigid structure that you might find in a woodier stem. Sclerenchyma would be the strongest plant cell type. They have lignin, which is what wood is going to be made of. We've got um, uh, bigger, thicker cell walls, uh, and a lot of these are dead when they hit maturity. And uh, think about uh, the parts of wood and what we might use for rope. Uh, that would be sclerenchyma. Think the S in sclerenchyma, think strong. And that's a good way to remember it. We also then have three different types of tissues. And I forgot to change the top there, sorry. Three different tissues. In um, dermal tissue will sound familiar because we have the epidermis of our skin. So dermal tissue covers the outside of the plant. You have the waxy cuticle of a lot of leaves or the bark. Uh, ground tissue is found inside a plant and, and just like parenchyma, it's doing a lot of the business of the plant. It's metabolic processes, the photosynthesis, storage, um, um, and uh, uh, converting molecules. The third type, vascular, that's what we're going to focus on today. Vascular tissue transports water, minerals, organic compounds. We're going to take a look at two of them next. Xylem transports water and minerals. Phloem transports uh, sugars uh, um, throughout the plant. And then you can see in this diagram, they've color coded them. So you'll notice that, uh, again, the green is the outside, the dermal tissue, the dark green, and you can see it's found throughout the plant. The lighter green would be the ground tissue, and you can see the majority of the plant would be ground tissue. And then the vascular tissue would be mainly in the center, uh, or uh, sometimes it's around the rings. And that would be carrying and transporting material. Uh, so um, that's your first, whoops, that's going to be your first uh, video that you've learned today.